over here with uh, a few little uh, gardening tips and tricks. And uh, I'm going to show you today, for starting off, we're going to do some tomato seed plantings. Uh, but I'm also going to show you how to do some cuttings of uh, some petunias. You can cut any petunia. Uh, they'll root out from their stem. So, uh, so I have some waves that I have here that I saved the seeds from last year. This one is a purple one. And the arms, as you can see, are getting really, really long on it. So what I am going to do is I'm going to cut it back. And I'm going to take off these bottom leaves here. Now, I don't use root, rooting hormone um, all the time. And that's because I have a hot box. I have, I have the right equipment that will help this um, uh, to germinate and to uh, grow the roots without the uh, rooting hormone. So I'm just going to get a little bit more soil here to put in my container. And, uh, and I'm making sure that I'm, I'm pushing that soil down all the way down to the bottom there so that there's no air pockets in there because uh, your, your roots and your will not grow very well if there isn't any soil there. There's hollows. So just a little bit more here. So this one here, we're going to firm the soil in a little bit harder than we might do uh, when we are doing uh, seeds uh, in a container. Because these are stems. These are hardy little stems. So I've got it all the way up to the top now here, level, so that the airflow will be good here. So now what I'm going to do is I've got this little tool here and that I use all the time. So I'm just going to use the end of it and I'm just going to poke a little hole. This is a six pack cell. So I'm just going to poke a little hole in there and I'm just going to pop this guy down after I've taken the leaves off of here. So I'm just going to put him down there and tuck him in. And so I'm just going to take another cutting off of here. What I'm trying to do with these is I'm trying to get them back to being sort of only just around the, the perimeter of the pot that they're in. And when you do this to your plants, especially if you uh, are getting them from the store and there's some blooms and things on them and you don't want to do any pinching back, for your wave petunias, you really need to do this because um, what this does, anytime you prune a plant, um, it says, oh, oh, so I got to get bigger because they think that something's wrong. So, uh, so it bulks them out. So you're going to get more arms, you're going to get um, more blossoms on this. So, uh, so it's really good to do that. Even with your, um, even with your little petunias that you have, um, doesn't have to be wave petunias. If you take those blossoms off when you first get them, they're in shock anyways when you're going to put them in the ground. And uh, because it is a shock for them to come out of their pot and to go into a different medium. And uh, so if you take the blossoms off, then the plant is not spending all that energy on trying to produce seeds because that's what the blossoms are. They're trying to procreate. So that's why they have blossoms. And uh, so if you take those blossoms off, then your plant, when you plant it in the ground, uh, is going to set up its root system faster and then you're going to have a bigger and more beautiful plant. So I've taken off uh, one, two, three, and this one is four, and I don't really see any other ones on here that I want to take off. There are a couple more little arms, but I think they're okay for right now. So that's, uh, that's four, and this is a purple one. So I'm just going to take the rest of these uh, little cuttings here. And I'm going to pop them into the soil here. And you can do this. I have a little hot box, but you don't have to have a hot box. 
you can put this in a plastic bag and set it on your windowsill. And uh, just so that it gets some heat inside uh, the plastic bag so that uh, the plants uh, the plants love to have some heat um, so that they can get their root systems going. So, okay. I'm going to put this one over here. There we go. I'm just going to see if I have another purple one here. Um, this isn't purple. This is a yellow one. So, and this has to be done as well. It's a beautiful symmetry, though. It's a beautiful, beautiful plant. And this one here um, is not, uh, it doesn't stretch out like the purple ones do. This one here is going to be about two feet wide and uh, about 18 inches tall, this, this uh, easy, easy wave yellow. So, I'm just going to take some cuttings off of this one as well. And I'll have to mark these differently. If I had all the same variety in one, uh, in one uh, container here, in one six-pack, then I would only need one uh, tag there to tell me what those were. So, okay, and one more down here. So, and because these are going in the hot box, I'm going to uh, put them in my little tray over here that I have my chamomile tea in. Uh, it's a natural fungicide, so it, uh, it'll help those little seedlings uh, get their root system and not have any uh, problem with damping off with any fungus uh, growth in there as well. So, okay. So I'm just going to show you ones that I already did, and this is a pink one, and can I see the date on here? This was April the 8th that I did these ones. So I'm just going to pop one out here and just see what I've got. And it looks like I've got some really nice growth on there, on the bottom. So I'm going to leave these uh, ones here in, uh, in this six pack for a little while longer. I want them to get uh, the root systems better than, better than that. I like to get them a little bit better than that before I pot them up into a pot of their own that would be this size. And then that's as big as I would pot it up to until I put it like in a hanging basket or I put it in the ground or wh whatever I'm going to do with, uh, with it. So, okay, I'll pop that guy back in there. So, so that's the petunias. And uh, I just wanted to show, if I can, on this little guy. When they first start growing, the bottom leaves down here, they always... Uh, they always die off so as soon as I can I take those bottom big leaves out of there so that I'll take that tag out of there so you can see perhaps um, because they're just going to um, die off anyway and then they can get moldy down there and that so so there's that little guy I've just uh, defoliated some of his little leaves so that's good for that one. And uh, the other thing I was going to show you is I'm going to repot a geranium. Now this little geranium, he's, he's pretty wonky here. So I'm going to get my pot for him. I'm going to pot him up. Um, this pot is only about two inch, two and a half inches. This one here is a four inch pot. So I'm going to pot him up into here. So as I've showed in other uh, videos, um, I like to get a little bit on the bottom and then I make a little wall here because I don't want to be pushing earth and my fingers down in there to upset the root system on that any more than I have to. So this will help out quite a bit. So what I do to transplant is I put my fingers over the top so that you're giving support to that stem. Now. now there's a nice root system on that one as well 
and there isn't roots going around and around. If there was, if this was really root bound, I would pull those little uh, roots away so that they know that they can go in a different direction. So now I have this one here, and I've got my little wall there. So I'm going to just push this guy down in there, and that should just about fill them right out. And so I've pushed it down a little bit further into uh, this container, and then I'm going to put some more soil up around it to try and give some more support to that stem that was all flopping around there. And geraniums, uh, you can do cuttings on geraniums. So if you happen to have a really long stem geranium that's all floppy, you can put that down as deep as you want to in, in your pot because it's going to root out. It's going to be a much sturdier plant because it'll root out. And uh, just go up to, just uh, put it down as deep as the leaves are. Where the leaves start, that's where you want the top to be. And anything that's below that, you can put that into... Uh, into a container so and I'm just going to put that over here in the chamomile as well and I'll move the wave out of here so we're just going to do some tomato seeds so I've got scotias here and I've got uh, beefsteak so now on the back of the seed package it tells me that it only wants an eighth of an inch of uh, of soil on the top of it. So I haven't got very many seeds in this one. Uh, I think there's 19. I count them out already. So uh, so in my little trays, the, this one here, this is deep enough to start the roots on them. So, uh, so I'm going to just press the soil down, especially around the edges, because they... Uh, that's where you might get pockets in there. It's easy to press down in the center, but not so easy on the outside edge. So because this is only an eighth of an inch from the top, I'm going to press down this soil till it's almost up to the top so that I'm about an eighth of an inch from the top. And I've got my little, I have a, a little piece of wood with a, another block on the top so it gives me a bit of a handle so that I can press that down. And I don't want to press too hard. I just want to flatten it out a little bit so that the seeds have somewhere to sit on there and they don't fall into a little crevice. So I'm going to take my glove off so it'll make it easier for me to, uh, to take these seeds and put them in here. So I think there's about 19 seeds here. So I usually do things in a pattern uh, when I'm uh, seeding things. So then I can see if they've come up or they haven't come up. So. And so there's 19, so I'll say there's 20. So I'm going to do uh, five up on the long side and four crossed on the, on the short side. So I'm just going to do that. One, two, three, four, and then one that's there already. Two, three, four, it's not one, five. And then two, three, four, five, oops, two there, two, three, four, five, and one, two, move him over a little bit, and three, oops, there was two there, three, and four so that makes the 19 so now because they only want a quarter of an inch I usually use uh, vermiculite the fine um, the fine vermiculite um, it's uh, it's a good thing to put on the top of it you can put some soil on there but it's really hard to get a quarter of an inch of soil on top of these little seedlings so I like to use the uh, vermiculite that's the fine vermiculite you can get these in smaller bags or you can get them in bigger bags if you get them in bigger bags you can uh, uh, it's a lot cheaper per ounce I guess or kilogram but I use a lot so I always buy the big bags so I'm just going to take this and you have to be careful that you don't breathe in your uh, your vermiculite 
anything that's powdery like this, you have to always be really careful about your lungs. So just, just putting enough on the top to give it a little bit of a cover on there. There we go. That looks pretty darn good. So now I'm going to press those seeds down again because I want them to make good contact with the soil. So now we're at the top of our container. So, and we want that because we want the airflow there. If it's down in the gully, then then there isn't good airflow in there, and that's where you're going to get your uh, uh, your damping off. Your uh, the fungus will grow in there, and you're not your seedlings will die off. So I've got some little containers over here that have my chamomile tea in them, and my chamomile tea is. Uh, one tea bag in uh, a two cup, uh, boil your water and um, and then just leave it, just fill it up halfway for a cup and brew it and for five or ten minutes and then when you're finished brewing it then you just top it up with uh, with plain water and uh, and that's my solution to do all of my uh, seedlings and the first time I do a transplant. You probably don't have to do it for a transplant, but um, that's just the way I've done it, and so that's what I'm going to do, so. Okay, so this was the purple wave, so I'm gonna put that over there. And that was the beefsteak, and there's my tag with my date on it, because I like to know when I did it. I recorded in a book as well, but just in case I forget to record it, I'll have it in there. So now I've got another dish that's already done here. So we're gonna do we're gonna do some scotias. Everybody likes the scotias, so I'm gonna do quite a few of these. So there's quite a few seeds in here, but I have until next year for them. So uh, sometimes there's a date on the on the package of seeds that tells you that they're viable for a certain length of time. So I'm going to do, I think, probably 35 seeds in here. So I'm going to do, uh, in this container, I can do five across and do seven up. So that'll be 35 seeds. So I'm just going to do that. And um, I'm a member of uh, the community garden that we have here in uh, Picto. And... Um, I have a plot there too, but I help out uh, beginning gardeners there, and uh, and we usually have some spots left over, maybe one or two spots, um, and there's always a little bit of ground here or there. So any extra vegetable seeds that uh, any of us have that uh, help out there, we put them in there, and then we donate the food to the uh, food bank or to Kids First. Uh, we have several. Um, organizations that we'll, we'll uh, donate to. So the conditions that we have or the terms that we ask people that on, on Monday morning, by Monday morning, whatever is uh, already ripe in your patch, uh, unless you tell us otherwise, we're going to go in and harvest because sometimes people can't get there uh, every week. Uh, they might be away or whatever. So we don't want that uh, that good food going to waste. So we uh, so we go in and harvest, and then that's what we do. Uh, and once it's harvested, then we take it over to the food bank and Picto here or, uh, or in town to Kids First, uh, whatever organization we're, uh, we're uh, helping out that week. So... Okay, so I've got all my seedlings in there. So that's 35. And, oops, that's the beefsteak. I don't want to put them in there. Here we go. There's my scotias. Just in case one drops down there, I'll just hold it over the tray. There we go. So I'll just put those aside over there. And now we're going to just do the little cover-up again. One quarter inch. Or not one quarter, one eighth inch for these guys. So, so I'm just going to put a little bit of the vermiculite on here again. And I have my tag already in there of the name of the seeds that are in here and the date that I have uh, planted them. 
and then once they have, whoops, put that over there. Once I have them uh, watered in with the chamomile tea, uh, then I'm going to put them in a container. I have one that's already done here. So this one has been sitting in the chamomile tea. And you can see how dark the vermiculite has gotten. I'll just show you the one that, ha that isn't. You can see the difference that this is quite light because it's not wet. So you know that this is saturated because it is, uh, it is, it has gotten to um, a more caramel color, a darker color. So I'm just going to put some, took him out, so I'll put some more water in there. Or the chamomile tea, I guess it is. And I'm just going to pop that guy in there so he can, he can soak up. Now, these little trays have holes in the bottom so and I water all of my plants from the bottom always water from the bottom um, it's better for the plants uh, and uh, my dad has small greenhouse and we never watered anything from from the top even the hanging baskets he made these uh, boxes and he put plastic heavy-duty plastic inside them and uh, then we filled them up with water and the uh, fertilizer and uh, and everything went into these uh, these big um, troughs, I guess they would be, that he had for uh, for his uh, plants. So there's this guy. I'm just going to go over here and get my uh, container that goes in. That it goes in. And for any of you that haven't been here before, um, these are the containers. I recycle everything that I can. These are from your uh, chicken, barbecue chicken or ham from the grocery store. And so I have my name tag in there and I put this in there. So it's got lots, it's a little bit lower than this side. And so then I just pop this little lid on. And these have holes in the tops here. I don't think I mentioned that before. But they have holes in the top. And I just put a little bit of tape on them so that the, all the moisture and the heat uh, can stay in there. So, And my hot box is right underneath me. So I'm just going to bend down and put that inside the hot box. So now the, the last thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to do some California poppies. Now, poppies are notorious for not wanting to be transplanted. So this is probably not one that you would want to do this way. Uh, I don't mind because uh, uh, somehow I have a really green thumb. And, and anything I do seems to work. But <clears throat> anyways, uh, these you would direct seed mostly into your, uh, into your uh, ground outside. But these seeds are really, really tiny. And so, I don't know if you can actually see that, the little round balls. So, what I do with the seeds that are really, really tiny, so that they don't get too clumped, because it's really hard to pick one up and put it, uh, to do my pattern with that. So, I just take a little bit of sugar and put it in there with it. And that separates out the seeds. Now you could use uh, play sand, that would be good as well, uh, to put in with there. It just helps the seeds to separate a bit, so that they, uh, they don't end up all jumbled up. And this is on the surface, they like to be planted on the surface with just a quarter of an inch, uh, not a quarter, sorry, an eighth of an inch as well. So, because poppies will, uh, will just pop up anywhere. Uh, they usually self-seed. Once, once you get them started wherever you're, you're planting them, they usually will pop up. Uh, not a true perennial, these, these ones here, but, uh, but they are, uh, uh, they're self-seeders, which is really great. So I'm just going to press that down a little bit. And take that out of your face. And so I'm just going to now just sprinkle this. I can't do a pattern with this because there's just too, too many seeds there. So I'm just going to sprinkle it evenly over the top of this. 
and then I'll put my vermiculite over top of that and then that will be it for for the poppies now I haven't done the poppies before so I don't know how many days it's going to be before they germinate um, in my conditions they always give you that information on your seed package but it doesn't mean that with the conditions that you have where you're seeding things um, may not be ideal so they may not always come up in the time frame that it tells you uh, on the seed package so don't get discouraged with that just give them a chance and they'll uh, and they'll be so happy that you gave them a chance and then they'll just pop up and you'll be so excited that you've got uh, all these little babies coming up and where's my presser and so I'm going to press the top here so they make good contact with the with the soil and I hope I have yep I have a California poppy here with the date on it so I'm just going to pop that in there and then that will go in the chamomile tea over here when the other ones are finished and I will put it in a container to go in my hot box so um, I see that there's some people watching. I'm not sure if there's any questions that you might have. I haven't done this before, but um, uh, I'll just wait a minute to see if you uh, if you have any questions or not. So, and if not, then that'll be it for today. And I'm going to take tomorrow off, so I'm not going to come back until Tuesday. And I'm hoping by Tuesday that maybe we're going to do something outside. Um, and I can dig up some roots, some plants out there, and I can show you how to, uh, to take them apart to make, uh, uh, make more of them. Because we're, uh, we're starting to do that in our gardens for the garden club because we have a sale coming up. We're not sure how we're going to do that this year, but, um, we're going to try and do a virtual sale. So, uh, so anyways, we're working on how that's going to be. And um, so I don't see any questions there, so I'm going to say goodbye for now, and uh, I'll see you on Tuesday. Thank you very much. Bye now, and stay safe.